to you, O Lord, with our whole heart. We will tell of all your wonderful deeds. We will be glad and exult in you. We will sing praise to your name, O Most High. And as we gather together in the presence of the living God, we know that our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. And now grace to you and peace from God Almighty and Jesus Christ our Lord, through the powerful work of God's Holy Spirit. Amen.
Test me and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. We express our longing for God's leading by our own transparent confession. Let us pray. Patient God, you have given us eyes to see and ears to hear. And yet when we are confronted by your goodness and surrounded by your love, we fail to see you or hear your voice. More often than not, we attend to the voices of the world that create confusion for our spirits and souls, rather than tune in on the power of your word and the gift of your love. O oh God, we confess our struggle to hear and see. We admit that we have failed. We recognize our desire to be influenced by the voices of this world and the signs of this age. We realize how easy it is to trust those who would gratify us immediately and yet leave us to wither and die. As we worship you today, we humbly confess our short-sightedness and our sin, all the ways in which we have gone away from you. Forgive us, O God, and restore within us a desire to see you and to listen to your voice. Amen. comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding, quick canopy, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey, and drippings of the honeycomb. 
Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. But who can detect their errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Sacrifices are pleasing to God.
Let us pray. As we gather our gifts on this day, instill within us a spirit of dedication and thanksgiving. Help us to commit our very lives to you, O God. Give us the grace to see you, to hear you, and to love you. Give us the strength to walk in the narrow path of your love and to ignore those that would lead us down a different pathway. Help us recognize your face in the faces of those who are poor, lonely, estranged, or suffering. Allow us to see your Son in the faces of those around us each day. Empower us, O God, so we might commit our lives to being your faithful servants, not only now, but always, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's health, house. Your, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You shall not Cover your ma the male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. the epistles 1st Corinthians chapter 1 verses 18 through 25 Christ the power and wisdom of God for the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing but to us who are being saved it is the power of God for it is written I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart where is the one who is wise where is the scribe where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, 
The world did not know God through wisdom. God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are, are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. the gospel according to John chapter 2 verses 13 through 22 Jesus cleanses the temple the Passover of the Jews was near and Jesus went up to Jerusalem in the temple he found people selling cattle sheep and doves and the money changers seated at their tables making a whip of cords he drove all of them out of the temple both the sheep and the cattle he also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the time of the year when most of us are getting a bit tired of the same old. Winter has been long and cold. The pandemic has been adding a layer of stress and uncertainty. And the disturbing reality is that we have a few more weeks to go before the weather lifts our spirits. The saying the same old implies that one is waiting for something better, but then one has to disappointingly admit that the wait was in vain. I have given a few people advice that now is not the time to make big decisions. The reason for this ask and sometimes unasked advice is that the whole world is prisoners of a situation from which we all want to escape. We have been insulated and isolated, stressed out and stayed in and unsettled and uneasy for a long time. Our worlds have become small and old. So every new option, even some bad options, now may look better than the same old. The careful reader of the Old Testament would notice that ancient Israel and her prophets were constantly yearning for something better. They yearned for something new, for they were tired of the same old. The same old of being slaves of, in Egypt. But when they were liberated, they quickly missed the old. And when they were journeying in the wilderness, their four decades track became old. And they could not wait for settling in the new and promised land. 
But even here, they soon longed for something new. For life was hard. Neighbors were annoying. And world powers were aggressive. And so it went on for years, decades, and centuries. The prophets challenged them when they were disobedient and unfaithful. They urged them to live as God's people. They confronted them when they suffered, and they too promised that God was going to bring something brand new. This hope of something new to replace the old was kept alive from one generation to the next, even as their lives continued to show familiar emotions like frustration, fury, fear, sadness, and the occasional happiness. And then, at God's time, in the words of John the Evangelist, the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen His glory. The new arrived. But then a very strange thing happened. When the new arrived, people opposed it. They clung unto the old. They were scared of the new. The Word, that is Jesus, went to a wedding in Cana where they ran out of wine. And as you know, Jesus turned water into the very best wine. John, in the typical John's fashion, is saying that the old is over. The new, better wine is the new era that has arrived. And it is joyful, it is good, and it is abundant. Certainly people would now embrace the new, for it is so much better than the old. And the very next paragraph is the one we read this morning. Jesus is cleansing the temple. And as you know, the other Gospels have this at the end of their Gospels. John has it here at the beginning. And he has it here for the same theological purpose as the wedding at Cana. You see, Jesus is bringing an end to the same old. He, as the Word of God who became flesh, brings an end to the old way of worshiping God through sacrifices and rigid rituals at the temple. He is replacing it with His own sacrifice on the cross to bring new now, I have heard many sermons on Jesus cleansing the temple. Most of them are eager to point out that Jesus was irritated and angry. Some preachers seem to like an angry Jesus. Some even use Jesus' anger as justification for our own anger and frustrations. Now, I think they miss the theological point of the gospel. You see, the author of this gospel is very clear about the purpose of this book. In John chapter 20, verse 31, he writes, and I quote, These are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in His name. Now let me remind you that when we read John's Gospel, we need to be aware of what is below the surface. In other words, we need to see John's theological purpose, for that really is what matters. We have to, be, we have to caution against being distracted by the obvious of what John is saying. Do not be distracted by an angry Jesus and his whip, or him turning tables over. Do not be distracted by the animals and the buyers and the sellers. For John, in essence, is saying that Jesus is doing something like spring cleaning. He is removing religious clutter 
of the old era of worship at the temple with its sacrifices. He is throwing out the idea of people coming to the temple to sacrifice animals in order to atone for their sins to become new. He is cleaning out empty rituals. He is throwing away those activities that seem very pious and religious on the surface, but are in fact nothing more than meaningless gestures. He is getting rid of those things that people rely on to make them feel safe and secure. He is turning over the tables of a feel-good religion that is about me instead of being about God. Yes, Jesus is releasing those sacrificial animals of my illusions that I can somehow broker my own redemption. Jesus, by the symbolic act of cleansing the temple, is replacing the old, rigid, insufficient way with something brand new. He is replacing it with a new way where his body is replacing the old physical building of the temple. And this is where it gets interesting. The spiritual leaders did not want him to do so. They opposed his new way. They have become used to and comfortable with the same old. They were accustomed to taking the law and clinically abide by the letter of the law without caring about the one who gave them the law. They went through the motions of their religion activities, but they did not care about the heart of the matter. They were in a rut, and they liked it that way. And that is why John is saying Jesus needed a whip and an aggressive action. Because the world still, just like the Jewish leaders, doesn't want change. It doesn't want to get rid of the old. The old works, albeit for some, better than others. The old is familiar and we don't have to change our set ways to go through the routine. But here is the divine truth from John. The old way leads to death and emptiness and alienation from God, from ourselves and from others. The old way is like fumbling in the dark, metaphorically stumbling over the clutter. The old lacks gladness and meaning. The old is empty and devoid of joy. Therefore, we need someone who will help us to get rid of these old things. We need someone who shows us a new way. Someone who is the new way. It is only when we realize that Jesus is God's Messiah who can unclutter our lives, who can make it new, who fills it with joy and meaning, that we can live as completely free people. God's light is right there, ready to be switched on. Deep down, we are all longing for something new. But we are looking for the new with old eyes. I think one could say that the world has become prisoners of their old ways and they are looking for something new. But they do so in the wrong places. It is hard for us to imagine a really new life in the way John is seeing it. You see, we think that freedom, freedom has to do with wearing or not wearing masks, eating out, 
going to movies and doing what we want to do. We define freedoms in terms of individual liberties and in terms of how things were in the past. And then we are surprised that we don't really feel free or new. As long as we hold on to the metaphorical old, we will never be truly free. John is clear. True biblical freedom comes through the work of Jesus. His body replaces temple worship Jesus shows the new is present in him. He is the Lamb of God who will be slaughtered. This is why the church to this day placed such a great emphasis on Jesus as the Messiah or the Christ. He is the one. It is through him that God makes things new. You see, the world considers this theological truth as foolishness. For the world considers newness in terms of doing new things, traveling to new places, shopping for new clothes, cars, or other new things. The Apostle Paul states that God's wisdom is different. It is true wisdom. The message that he proclaims is the message of the cross. The message that Christ gave himself, that he was willing to be crucified and die for us. This is foolishness for a selfish world. But for us who have been made new in Christ, it is a powerful message from God. Herein lies true newness. God in Christ transformed us. God is able to make everything, people, structures, relationships, and yes, all creation brand new. So when we journey towards Easter, John is reminding us that Jesus the light of the world is shining into the dark and old world. John reminds us that Jesus is the one who transforms the old into something brand new. He helps us to get rid of all those old things that prevent us from being truly free, truly at peace. He gives us the strength and courage to get rid of those things that prevent us from living lives the way God intended. He gives us life, new life, abundant life. Amen. Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God, for it is holy and right to do so. Holy God, we come to you hesitantly, for we are sinful human beings. At the same time, we are reminded that you love us so much that you sent your own Son to make us new and to reconcile us with you. Mindful of this wonderful truth, we come to you with gratitude in our hearts and a song of praise on our lips. We thank you for your patience with us as we cling to our old, rigid, and easy ways. Move us to embrace and rejoice in the newness that Jesus brings. We pray for courage and perseverance as many of us are reaching the end of our ropes with the pandemic, with winter, with isolation and uncertainty. Inspire us to share your joy and new life in a way that will lead to hope. Hear us as we pray for our church. We thank you for each member and friend who enriches our lives and help us on our journey of faith. Make us faithful, O God. Make us new in Christ. We pray for people we know and love and who need your presence, healing and comfort. Hear us as we pray for Carolyn Cromer, Dave Gordon, Doug's father and his family, Craig DeRusso, Matt Durkey, son of, friend, son of a friend of Amy Bushway, Shauna Hamilton, Bill and Janet's daughter-in-law, Sharon and Bob Ryder, Pam Rust, Bob King's sister. We pray for David and Kathy Snyder, who, is, who are recovering from COVID. Be close to them, we pray. Be with our homebound members and everyone who has been affected by the pandemic. We pray for all refugees, victims of natural disasters, war, and violence. We pray for our work, for your world, O oh God, and we pray for so many people who are suffering. Deliver us and restore your world, O oh God. Be with those who suffer, and today we lift up to you those innocent people suffering in Yemen. Guide leaders to work together to solve that humanitarian crisis. Hear us as we pray, for we pray this in the name of Jesus, the one who came to make all things new, and who taught us to pray, saying in one voice, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
The same old is no more. Jesus Christ came to make us new, to make this world new, to make the whole creation new. Believe this, it is true, and as you go into this world, share this good news with others. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God Almighty, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.